Um, well, uh, there, there, there was a report there recently that um, in the European elections, the campaign which is now just beginning, uh, uh that uh, uh, Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael uh, were looking at a voting pact in which the two parties would support each other and vote for each other. And having heard the Minister and the Fianna Fáil representatives here today, I mean, it'd be so logical, wouldn't it, uh, that Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil uh, should, um, having worked so hard together as the coalition for the last three and a half years, including on this legislation, that they now should express it in the European elections and uh, indeed in other elections, and, and then the rest of us can take you on head to head. Um, can I just say, I think, uh, I think uh, Deputy uh, Daly, as, as always, I mean, uh, she's. Uh, you know, put our finger on the, the nub of the issue that many of us, I think, in, in the House, uh, indeed, I'd say all of us, um, we do believe that um, the sustainable, there is a sustainable development uh, possible for Dublin Airport. Um, uh, I, li like others, I, I've always lived beside an airport because um, I come from near Baldonnell. And uh, as I was growing up, uh, Cahirlock, and uh, going down to the cattle and so on and so forth, uh, we, uh, you know, uh, fighter jets would be screaming overhead. So I've, I've always been used to being on a flight path, and I'm still on a flight path, of course. Um, uh, thankfully, because of uh, wind is mostly from the southwest, uh, it's planes coming into land um, in, in Dublin Bay North on, on, the, on our boundary. But I'm so aware of the profound impact that it does have on uh, the population, uh, you know, of, of St. Margaret and uh, Clochran, as was mentioned, and, and indeed all around the airport. And, and um, uh, yes, yeah, sustainable development certainly, certainly is what we should aim for. Uh, in fact, um, I think all the community bo uh, bodies and projects, small business centres and so on, that I've worked with uh, throughout my career uh, um, and before politics, uh, Minister, uh, we've all benefited, obviously, from interacting with the airport in terms of employment and so on. But we also feel that uh, the, the you know, noise issue and, and nighttime flying and so on, that, that, that those are matters that need to be addressed and we have the opportunity, I think we had the opportunity in this bill uh, to actually uh, address this in a, a very definitive way. Um, and um, uh, again, my colleague Deputy Daly um, rightly mentioned, of course, about uh, noise contours uh, and I was very proud in the past, of course, to represent Port Marnock. Um, and uh, uh, the whole of the Balgriffin Kinsealy area, uh, which of course is uh, profoundly affected. Um, and uh, again, it's very important that uh, all across the noise contours that the, um, the levels of sound uh, are monitored and uh, very closely invigilated. But the, at the core of all of that, I think, ha has to be held. Now, I, I listened, as you, as you saw, Minister, very, very carefully to your response to my colleagues' amendments, to uh, Deputy Ryan's amendments uh, and Deputy Munster and to Deputy Daly's amendment, which we, we resubmitted um, uh, uh, Amendment 3. And it does seem to me, Minister, that you're sort of making it up as you go along. Uh, there's no question about that, because uh, quite clearly from what you said about 598, the way, you, you, the way you set it out, there's no reason then in the world not to accept or not to retain Deputy Munster's amendment in, re you know, in, in relation to the general remarks about health. I think Deputy Ryan has made this, this point already uh, very, very strongly. So to accept uh, Deputy, Deputy Ryan's amendment, you are making it up, actually, uh, as we go along, um, and, and you're trying to uh, identify, you know, you're trying to, to to, to uh, present it now as a sort of a conflict uh, between us, uh, between this country and the European Union in relation to 598, in, re in relation to, uh, to, to noise levels. And effectively, there, there is no conflict really, uh, because uh, what we're seeking to simply to have uh, at the heart of the legislation is a recognition of this. You keep referring back to the, to the older legislation, uh, uh, etc. But if it does deal with it, as you say, in, in these general terms, which, in, which would include WHO guidelines, then there's no reason on this earth why you don't accept Deputy Ryan's amendment. Uh, because it, you know, it, 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 it makes the point you're making. So you're actually contradicting yourself. And as I said, not for the first time, unfortunately, in this House, uh, you're, you're, you're making things up. Uh, and I mean, the, 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 the centre, of course, of the, of the, whole, the whole issue, uh, again and again, we keep coming back to, is the, 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 the matter of regulation. And uh, down through the years, uh, you, um, 
you were a furious um, critic, I think, of financial regulation uh, and indeed of uh, company law governance regulation in this country, rightly so. We, we remember your pay huge, huge articles about different banks uh, and about governance across the company sector uh, and, and, and about regulators who, who were, in fact, you know, kidnapped. Uh, by their industries, but you are exactly doing you know, what you always um, invade against. You, you, you are placing uh, a regulator in that precise situation because nobody can take it you know, seriously uh, that, that uh, we, we are talking here about an independent regulator. And it's very poignant like when you look at, um, as many of us have received, uh, so much correspondence from um, affected uh, residents um, and from people who live near the flight path and how very poignantly uh, they, they ask uh, again and again and they say again and again, Fingal County Council, uh, it cannot be the competent authority uh, because they derive such a substantial part of their revenue from the DAA. They cannot be considered independent. Uh, that is no, that's an objective fact, no matter what uh, Deputy O'Brien would say. Um, uh, from the day Fingal, Fingal County Council was created out of the old Dublin County Council 25 years ago this year, Minister, it, uh, you know, it, 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 the airport was the fundamental economic driver of, of that County Council, and that, that is the fundamental point. Um, and, uh, I mean, these correspondents, they, they say quite clearly still, they feel that the DAA themselves have stated uh, their, their own opposition to WHO guidelines. And that's the real reason, by the way, you are not prepared to accept my amendment. Uh, it's because uh, DAA DAA itself, uh, perhaps not the current chief executive, but some of the predecessors have, have said very definitively that they're not prepared to accept WHO. Um, and, and that's the reason, not this spurious nonsense uh, you've given us uh, about the difference between um, uh, on 598, uh, be, between what the general principle states um, and what, what, the, uh, what the, 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 the principles of the legislation or, or what the principles of, of uh, these amendments uh, would put into the bill or would retain in the bill because we, we put this in and the Senate, uh, against our will, uh, took it out. Um, and that's uh, an appalling situation. And of course, in the Senate, it was Fine Gael, it was ourselves and Fianna Fáil who managed, who engineered this, despite Deputy uh, O'Brien. He doth protest too much uh, because he was at the heart, him, him and his colleagues were at the heart of what you achieved in the Senate by eliminating um, uh, the, the references to, to health and to WHO guidelines. Uh, uh, so uh, I think, as I said, you've, you've made a, a, a totally spurious argument. Can I just say, by the way, about St. Margaret's? I think the point about St. Margaret's uh, surely is, Minister, that you were invited to go out there. Uh, yeah, to be there uh, with them uh, at you know, different times and to uh, actually see how bad uh, things can be and how you can't open the window. For example, uh, hopefully <clears throat> this coming uh, few days we're going to have some very warm weather, uh, but in, in St. Margaret's and the environs, uh, you, know, you can't open your windows because you head straight uh, way up past the 60 decibels level. That was the point, I think, um, that, that, uh, that people uh, were, were making. Uh, as I as I said, um, you know, we, 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 you discussed the, the, uh, the you mentioned WHO um, at length um, and, and went through the 2002 regulations and so on, the changes at EU level. But again, I think it is uh, it, your argument is uh, it's totally, you know, it's totally, it's totally uh, contradictory uh, from the, the, for, the general point you make. You, you would either accept my amendment um, and, and have WHO there, or you would accept from what you're saying yourself, uh, Deputy Ryan's amendment. And it has to be said, of course, that um, um, Deputy O'Brien and Deputy Troy were talking about, um, I'm not a member of the Transport Committee, but just talking about the, uh, the, the times before this bill and the times that have, uh, if you like, uh, the time that's passed uh, uh, before this bill was brought into this House. But, I mean, there has been great interest, I think, and I know Deputy Ryan, Deputy Munster, uh, Deputy Daly, um, um, who has done colossal work on this uh, area, all down through her time in this House. And as recently, I think, as uh, was it early last summer, Deputy Daly and myself, um, we, you know, we submitted a motion to this 
House, uh, which I think is still on the Clor Minister, if you look at the full Clor on a Tuesday, uh, where, we, where we were asking that with 34.4 million passengers in the airports in uh, uh, Irish airports 2017, the increased use of air travel over many years, the probable uh, impact of increased traffic, uh, due, possibly due to Brexit and to some of the cha hopefully changes that might happen here with uh, future direct investment, um, and our, you know, uh, the, the, the new relationship to some extent that we'll have with the European Union if Britain does uh, finally leave, and that the airport was planning for up to 50 million people. We were asking you then um, to, to note uh, the EU directive planning conditions and environmental uh, impacts studies which developed over the past 20-25 years. Uh, sorry? Uh, it's there. It's there. Yeah, yeah. I've used every PMB. It's, it's different, uh, Deputy Troy, when you're, in, when you're actually independent. Very difficult. I've had, I think myself I've had only one, which I used, as Cahirlach will remember, for the Stardust Committee. Uh, to, to, to me, uh, uh, Deputy, as it is now, uh, for 30 in accordance with the order of the House, I ask you to move the adjournment of the debate. Uh, I, I move the adjournment. Thanks, Karen. Before proceeding to the next.